A couple years ago, I remember going to T-Bex and uh, Mike from Mike's Road Trip had done a presentation and he's like, video's the way of the future. And I was like, I'm digging in my heels. I'm going to write until I die. Like we've had written words since like the ancient Greeks. Like it's not going anywhere. Your video will come and go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The scroll. Yeah, exactly. The wheel isn't that big of a deal <laughs> on a typewriter. And I just, I remember just feeling such a visceral response. Like I will not abandon writing. Like I'm a writer. That's what I do, and there will always be room for me. And now here I am, however many years later, and I'm like, short form video content is awesome. Um, <laughs> 15 seconds or less. <laughs> Welcome to Travel Matters, the official podcast of TBEX. Here are your hosts, the radio vagabond, Palabo, and TBEX CEO, Rick Calvert. Welcome to another episode of Travel Matters and Rick, can you believe we're just a week away? We're just a week away from T-Bex Marbella. It's going really fast right now, Pally. I, 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 th I felt it's just a few days ago that we said goodbye in Tri-Cities, and here we are again, getting ready for the next one. You know, it's really weird because a lot has happened between then and now, uh, but yeah, time is definitely flying right now. What has happened? What have you been busy? <laughs> He said knowingly. Yeah, I think um, I think it's because you know nothing happening for two years, two two plus years, and then <laughs> things happening every month and a half, uh, you know, just compresses everything. I feel we're hitting the floor running here. Yes, absolutely. So we we have um, a, a couple of episodes to go with stuff that we recorded in, in Tri-Cities and uh, we can't wait to share that with you. And uh, next week we're going to speak to um, Michael Collins, our good old friend. Who always has great information on the travel industry side. Um, you know, Michael is one of the people who started in traditional publishing. He was a travel magazine publisher himself a lifetime ago. Um, and has been on the PR side for many, many, many years now, um, and was one of the first people on that side of the of the equation to really adopt social media and influencer marketing and working with creators. And he he really understands the best way for creators and travel brands to work together from the brand side. So he's always got great insights mm. for us. And yeah, exactly. And every single time that we've had him on Travel Matters, I feel we don't really need to prepare much because when you put a microphone in front of Michael and just start a conversation, something good is going to come out of that. And that for sure happened in Tri-Cities as well. Yeah. Yeah. He's always got good information to share and, and you know, good data, um, good insights, from what he's hearing from his clients and other DMOs and travel industry brands out there. So, yeah, I'm mm. looking forward to hearing that episode. Yeah, and also in next week's episode, we're having we, – we're kind of warming up to uh, the, the T-Bex in, in Thailand and having – Candy on, and I'm, I'm not even going to try to say her na her last name. Who does social media for Tourism Authority of Thailand in Los Angeles in North America. And they have offices all over the world, so she's just one of several. But um, this was our first time meeting Candy, and she was really great to talk to. I know they all had a great time. You know, um, Thailand was there in force in Tri-Cities, as they always do. They oh, don't yeah. do things small. No, no, no. Yeah, they, there was a, a whole delegation there. I remember the uh, the conversation we have that we're going to share next week. And uh, if you really don't want to go to Thailand, you should not listen to that episode because after you hear that conversation, you got to go. Yeah, absolutely. Oh. If that makes sense, yeah, <laughs> it made sense in my mind. Yeah, we're going to come back after this uh, week's interview uh, and talk a little bit more about uh, the upcoming uh, uh, event in Spain. But let's have this week's interview with Jennifer Ruins. You're listening to Travel Matters, the official podcast of TBEX. We're now joined by Jen Ruiz, and I just came from your TikTok uh, session. It was TikTok talk, TikTok talk, and it was amazing. I have just one simple question: How do I get a TikTok to go viral? 
<laughs> <laughs> That's the million dollar question, isn't it? Uh, well, we talked about this in, in our presentation, but the number one most important thing is watch time. That's why you'll see a lot of videos that are seven seconds long because people are much more likely to watch through a seven second video than they are through a 60 second, you know, five minute video. So the shorter your video is, Maybe it's hurting all of our collective attention spans, but it will uh, boost your pocket when you see that it gets viewed over and over again, goes viral, gets you more customers. So I would say 15 seconds or less should be most of your videos. And then if it gets watched over and over for whatever reason, because there was a transition that people didn't catch or because there was a reveal of a location at the end that people want to see that again because they didn't catch it right away or because you put in information about travel credit cards and they didn't get it all so they'll watch Watch it again or because it was just so entertaining that they're like this is hilarious let's see that again let's say it was a travel fail and you like really ate it while wakeboarding and they were like that was funny I've watched it 10 times that video is gonna go viral so that's how you can have a viral video on TikTok and you got you got into uh, really got into TikTok during the pandemic was it kind of your pandemic project to uh, to get an expert to b become an expert on TikTok It was unexpected. I think like everybody else, I had disregarded the platform or just thought, you know, I'm too busy to take on another new content creation challenge. Um, but when I realized that my regular travel content was not being well received, that people were actually like not wanting to see the regular content on Instagram or Facebook or Twitter, like I didn't really have that to post. TikTok was a good place for me to experiment with sharing other aspects of my life. So I started there as sharing what it's like to be a content creator, how I transitioned from law to blogging, you know, what it was like to be empowered to travel solo and to be a, like a woman approaching 30 and wanting to do different things. So all these different aspects of my life that maybe I wasn't talking about because I was focusing on the pretty pictures and what the destinations have to offer. Suddenly I could be real on TikTok and I didn't have to be perfectly curated in this perfect dress in this perfect setting I could just be a person sharing what I know and that in and of itself was worthy enough to go viral and to get attention um, it didn't have to be this amazingly edited perfect like award-winning photograph like I felt that I had to be on Instagram just to get any attention beforehand so is it too simple to say TikTok is to YouTube as Twitter is to blogs Yes, I think that's accurate. Although it's funny because they're both trying to compete with each other now, right? So YouTube released YouTube Shorts to try to compete with TikTok short form video content. And then while everyone else is scrambling to get short form video content, TikTok's like, we'd like to release videos up to 10 minutes now. Like, go ahead and do some more educational <laughs> well, content. Well, like Twitter increased the 140 <laughs> character limit a while back. Yeah. Right. Um, so I do think that it is an easier way to be a video content creator. For many reasons, YouTube was... It seemed onerous and it seemed like uh, like just like an impediment. Like there were so many obstacles to getting started with YouTube. You have to know how to edit. You have to be able to put in like 16 hours of editing for one hour video, you know, and you have to have really good film, like photography and, and um, like equipment so that you can film everything and mic everyone up and have everything perfect. Um, TikTok has none of those barriers to entry, right? Like anybody can make a TikTok video, anybody can post it, and that whole process doesn't have to take more than five minutes total. And I think that has been a big game changer. I know personally, a couple years ago, I remember going to T-Bex and uh, Mike from Mike's Road Trip had done a presentation and he's like, video's the way of the future. And I was like, I'm digging in my heels. I'm going to write until I die. Like <laughs> we've had written words since like the ancient Greeks. Like it's not going anywhere. Your video will come and go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The scroll. Yeah, exactly. The wheel isn't that big of a deal. <laughs> And I just, I remember just feeling such a visceral response. Like, I will not abandon writing. Like, I'm a writer. That's what I do. And there will always be room for me. And now here I am, however many years later. And I'm like, short form video content is awesome. Um, <laughs> 15 seconds or less. <laughs> I think that, you know, key takeaway message there is we've always got to be adapting in the world that we live in. Um content creation there will always be new platforms always new things you know one of the pressures that i see is the marketers always follow the market 
And the people who drive the market, younger people, are always running away from the marketers. Mm -hmm. So they'll always be moving to the next thing. And then, I'm curious about this with TikTok, has the balance already shifted? Because, you know, almost every platform starts off with young people. But then, pretty soon, the old people take over. Yeah. Has that happened with TikTok yet? Has it become, you know, the fastest growing segment is now 40-year-old guys? Yes. So, Mm. yes. So, primarily, I'd say 60% of TikTokers are beyond the younger Gen Z age group. So, it has grown because now it's at over a billion users. And it's just impossible to have that many people and not have a diversity in terms of age and geographic and, you know, messaging that's being put out there. So, I would say that we're now at a point where everyone is represented on TikTok because it's just so widely downloaded. In my presentation, you know, everybody raised their hands in terms of them having a TikTok account. And I mentioned this, you know, nobody in that room was a dancing teenager. And yet, everybody raised their hands. Everybody had an account so i do believe that your your people are on there um and i it's it's not to the point where it's undesirable to be on there because it's been taken over by like the quote unquote like lame uh like your grandmother's on tiktok kind of thing yeah and uh, maybe she is (laughs) and maybe she's watching things on there but she's not necessarily like super posting or creating content or being as engaged with it and generally a lot of the creators are I have seen a lot of, uh, I've seen creators all over the gamut. I've seen over 50 creators. I've seen, you know, people spreading certain messaging or something that you wouldn't expect to be on TikTok. Um, so I do think every everybody's on there. I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be too concerned about that in general. Does, is it easier to create video? And I think you said this, I just want to clarify. Is it easier to create video on TikTok than it is on YouTube? Yes, very much so. Um, for many reasons, you can edit right in TikTok's app. So similar to Snapchat, where Snapchat introduced these filters and these ways to have effects in app, TikTok does that, but to another level. So I will sometimes edit off app, but I can do so much in app. I can put in like green screen effects. I can do, you know, voiceover, captions, adjusting my clips. In the TikTok app. Yes. All of that in the app. And so it's very easy to upload content right on there. And I try not to take too long to make content because I want to be posting so frequently because you don't know what's going to go viral. So I don't necessarily want to take like an hour to make a post when I know I could in that hour maybe do two or three posts and then any one of those two or three could really take off. Um, So I like to... I like to vary it up kind of the amount of time. So sometimes I like to just be like, okay, I'm just going to sit here and I'm going to do a lip sync to a trending sound. That'll take me whatever the time it takes to record that sound. Usually less than 15 seconds. I'll put some text or something I want to share, something that I think will make it shareable. So it doesn't matter what you have in the background. If the content that you're sharing is good content, that's going to get shared. So if it's me doing a lip syncing to a trending sound, but I have text over that that's saying, like, there's this limited time special. You can get this deal. I just found this flight alert. Whatever the case is, like, that's all going to get shared no matter what the stuff in the background is. So you really shouldn't worry too much about the aesthetic, how it looks, you know, the editing, all that thing. Um if you And you should try different formats. So you should try, you know, voiceover. You should try text over trending audio. You should try talking to the camera with green screen behind you. Um, when you are talking, you want to try to keep people's attention. So you people do like two-second clips. So you want to cut every two seconds. You don't just want to have 30 seconds of you talking straight to the camera. Because every time you cut the video, it, it kind of renews people's as attention span. Yeah, you know? it's that little endorphin rush exactly yeah um so there's many different ways there uh, it is frying our brains it definitely is it is and i, I <laughs> and to an extent i feel bad that i contribute to it but i feel like i could also i could be i could be the product that social media is trying to sell which is the user or i could use social media to at least make me money and then it's it's a business path for me but either yes. way like we're all doomed and so like you're either gonna <laughs> be the person that they're using or you're gonna be the person using social media so which yes. one you know you talked a little bit about the, the whole thing about it, it being authentic and it doesn't have to be perfect. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm, I'm about to go into TikTok. I'm not there yet. I barely got into Instagram stories. Uh, but my kids have been pushing me and saying, you got to get into it. you got to get into it. And they've also been mentoring me with this was uh, with my, my Instagram stories. Uh, them saying that sometimes... I'm trying to make it too nice that it almost looks like a commercial and people will just skip that. 
So they encouraged me to make it more handheld and not perfect. So is is that the same with TikTok that you should keep it authentic because it so it doesn't look like you're trying to sell something? Yes. And to an extent kind of crazy stuff does well on TikTok. So for instance, um I just had a sponsored campaign that I did for a weather app. And so when I was in Florida and it started raining like crazy, I knew that that video would do well because people want, love to see disaster. So like, yeah, people would be like, fun things to do in Disney. Yeah, that video would do well. But like I got rained out in Disney after I paid $3,000 to be here. That video is going to go viral. <laughs> um, so like something like that where it isn't perfect. You know, I, and I saw the same effect happen with another traveler that I thought was really funny. So they had posted kind of like what this last year has been like. And it was all these amazing travel highlights and everybody hated it they were like this sucks like you with your perfect travel life like none of this is yeah, relatable you live in the dream yeah, 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 yeah. You're stuck at home exactly and so he replied to one of the comments like being like somebody said something like this is all influencers ever show like nobody ever shows the bad stuff and so he replied to that comment and he did a video where he showed all the bad stuff that happened during that six months like they fell and they cut themselves like they missed something like just videos of all the disaster that video million plus views and everybody going wild like oh my god we never see this part you know so almost to an extent doing something different somewhat controversial even anything where you can get people to talk about things i had taught i put a video about the dead sea and i put like um israel is here which like technically israel is there but like then people were fighting over geography and like where's palestine what's israel who borders the dead sea like all these things were um big conversations sub conversations going on in the thread and that's what you want like you almost want your video to be a trigger for people in that sense because when they discuss these things in the comments it boosts your videos you know i had mentioned in the tiktok talk i had a video about just like a hot chocolate in Italy that went viral and I had put text over it about how I booked a flight just to Italy just to get that hot chocolate and so so many sub threads of there like that hot chocolate's too thick you could have bought that with like Swiss mix for a dollar <laughs> um, like all those things and so yeah I was, think- was that something when you posted it that you were expecting that to do that or did it totally take you by surprise it totally took me by surprise which is why again you can't worry too much and you can't sit here and be like i have to edit that was a video from 2017 it was a seven second clip it was super old not even like i don't even think i cleaned or wiped off my screen and then i just put the text on it but because i said that like i caught a 225 dollar flight to italy like to get this hot chocolate and then so many people commented like is 225 dollars cheap or is that expensive for italy like you know like all these different sub threads that i just had no idea would catch on i almost never know when something's gonna go viral or super crazy i mean sometimes i have an idea if i know it's a really unique thing or a really you know sometimes i i just feel it the delta one video that i did where i made my boyfriend take the video about 20 times and we got into a huge fight in the airplane because he was so embarrassed because we were in first class and he's like nobody's taking video and i was like i do not care like take the video again (laughs) i need the whole video of me lying flat all the way to the end that's the point of these seats like do it again because he would stop because you get embarrassed and people were looking at him and i was like we're not gonna see these people again but i'm telling you this is a viral video Thankfully, I was vindicated. The video got over a million views. Delta shared it on their account. I'm now on Delta's mailing list to receive gifts. Like, and it's because I knew that video would go viral. Because I and knew. And you're still together. And we're still together. <laughs> but it, it also, it, it, it's. Um, How many views did it take for him to admit you were right? He still. He's around time. the 500,000 mark. He's like, okay. <laughs> You were right. <laughs> He's still a little bit bitter about it, um, so I don't bring it up too much. But it did. Like I was like, look, the video you took got a million views, and I try to, you know, do it sweeter with honey than with vinegar, right? So I just tell him like, hey, thank you so much for taking that video. Like because you stuck it out, we got a million views together. We. <laughs> Way to go, Jim. Good, good, good. good uh good reaction to that <laughs> yeah and and um you did uh, you did you double duty at uh, this tea break you had uh, you had two sessions i did yeah so you also talked about self-publishing i yeah, did exactly. i did i'm very uh grateful to announce that i have a traditional publishing deal that i got last month um so it's been really a thrill for me to 
see publishing from all the different aspects and see the different ways that entrepreneurs can get their message out there, either if you do the traditional route, if you go the self-publishing route. And I do think self-publishing was a big launch for me and my career. It helped me get seen. It helped me go from obscure lawyer that nobody thinks travels to a travel expert. Like I literally wrote the book on travel, helped me get TEDx talks. You know, everything I feel has been a step on the way here. And I think for a lot of people that don't know where to start and that are already writing a ton of content for their blogs because people write, you know, thousands of words in blog posts, they could easily repurpose that content, do a book and suddenly have something, a title that is instantly recognizable to the world outside of creatives because everybody knows what an author is. Not yeah. everybody knows what a blogger does, but already as a blogger, you are worlds ahead in becoming an author because you have a platform, you have an audience and you have tech skills. So you know how to do things. Like- and content, a library of content. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Like you just said, you can compile into a book pretty quickly. Exactly. But he used to be in the tr- in the in the publishing industry, which is a really complicated, funny business. That if you self published, they would never take you seriously and ever get up up actual book publisher. That's out the window now. Correct. Mm. I think it really comes down to sales yeah. because at the end of the day, a publisher wants to see can you sell a book. And so if you're somebody who can successfully self-publish and show that your audience has bought the book, that you've gotten good reviews on the book, that your book has been featured or won awards, you know, that was when I was writing my query, that was what they wanted me to focus on. She was like, I know... Because I didn't, eat, I got a book deal and I haven't even finished writing the book. I mean, I, it's amazing. I don't know how I managed this, but um, she because it's, I mean, it's technically nonfiction, but a memoir is still really a story. It maybe should have been finished by now, but they're like, look, you don't got a book, so you really got to go hard and sell what you do have, which is a platform that you've grown yourself over X years. Um, this, you know, this many. Um, this many awards that you've won, this many sales that you've had of your existing books. like So kind of taking that and using it as a proof of concept. But to do that, you have to actually commit yourself to doing self-publishing the right way. And I think a lot of people, maybe they'll self-publish and they don't take it as seriously because it's not a traditional book deal yep. and they don't go hard on marketing and they don't put everything behind it. And But it can be. I mean, you can make good royalties. You can have good... Uh, opportunities and people coming to you because of the book um, if you take it seriously and you don't look at yourself like oh I'm just a self-published author and nobody cares but if you're like oh I've made this amazing book and everybody's gonna like it you know and if you put the quality behind it if you make sure you have a cover that looks professional right it doesn't look like you made it yourself on Canva it's gonna it's so much like it's hard to distinguish but what book is or isn't traditionally published um, and I think it's it's something that a lot of people think is over their heads but it doesn't have to be yeah well jen we definitely take you seriously and we appreciate you sharing the wisdom and the lessons that you've learned and all the years that you've invested and sharing it with the tbex community it's my pleasure congratulations on on all the success and the book deal thank you thank you very much thank you for joining us jen thank you that was the amazing Jennifer Ruins, uh, who uh, did two sessions, and I learned a ton from her. And uh, as I always do, she's uh, always a, a great person to uh, to hang around, and we love having her on TBEX. Yeah, uh, Jen, you know, has been doing this for a while. Um, she knows a lot. She's really smart. Um And she shared quite a bit with us in Tri-Cities, you know, on the self-publishing side. And also on TikTok, Jen was one of the early adopters of TikTok. And um, you and I learned a lot talking to her. And um, I know she got great reviews in her session, too. So for creators who aren't using TikTok yet, it's definitely something to consider. Absolutely. And as we mentioned in the beginning, we're just one week away from um, TBEX in Marbella, Spain. And I am already here. I am at Uncle Finn's Mango Farm on the other side of Malaga, but um, on Costa del Sol and enjoying the sun. And uh, yeah, you can start looking forward to getting here, Rick. I am. And you just showed me the view there at Uncle Finn's place, which is incredible. Um and we've already started packing. Some of us are leaving tomorrow. I'll be leaving Friday, and then uh, I'll see you on Sunday. And then we'll kick yeah. off um, pre-dex tours and everything on Monday, the the sixth. 
And we, we got a good conference lined up. A great conference lined up. So um, our opening keynote, we've been looking forward to this for a really long time. Omo and Yolanda from Hey, Dip Your Toes In. And they're going to be talking about diversity in the travel industry, which is obviously been a hot topic for the last couple of years. Kerwin McKenzie is back to do our first-timer session, actually, before that opening keynote. Kerwin is always a favorite at TVX, and he kind of makes first-timers feel welcome. Yeah, he, yeah Kerwin did that in uh, in Billings as well, I remember. And uh, he he wasn't able to make it to uh, Tri-City, so I, I really missed him. I, I felt... A T-Bex without Kervin is a little bit like uh, Christmas without Santa Claus, but uh, I'm <laughs> glad to hear that uh, he's coming to, to Marbella. Me too. I'm really looking forward to seeing him. Kerwin and Vicky Winters are two people who just bring amazing energy to t and when they're not there, we miss them. So, um, yeah. Michaela Malozzi is going to be talking about branding. Um, our friend Michael Collins also will be speaking. Um, Injun Caban, who I know you got to talk with, in Tri Cities, um, who who came to Tri Cities all the way from Turkey? Yeah, was on one of the previous episodes as a guest as well. Exactly, and he'll be talking about um, how to define your unique a value proposition, which is great. Uh, one of my favorites, uh, Santi Akil, who is from Italy, is talking about the Google Search Console and. If you haven't seen Sante speak before about SEO and Google, you have to go see this. He will blow your mind. He's one of the smartest guys in the world when it comes to search. There are a lot of smart people out there when it comes to search and SEO. Uh, Sante's on a whole different level. I've had multiple people approach me after one of Sante's talks and say, you know, I thought I knew a lot about SEO. Uh, that guy's operating in a different level than me so um, yeah so if, if you're looking to up your seo game that's definitely one to see another speaker we have coming back from tri-cities is serge pitnoff uh from travel payouts one of our sponsors he's sharing data about affiliate travel links and insights that they've learned from analyzing a hundred million travel affiliate links so he's gonna share some best practices for affiliates and things that they've learned by analyzing all those links. The session was super popular in Tri-Cities. And our closing keynote speaker, and I hopefully I won't mess up her name, is Jean Lan, uh, who is a Chinese influencer. And she's got half a million Instagram followers. So really looking forward to that closing keynote. And we've got a whole bunch of other sessions. Tamiko Harvey, Tim yeah. Leffel, Max Harthorn. Uh, Max Baker, Melvin Bocher from Travel Dudes, the first time he's been back to t in many years, Anton Diaz um, from the Philippines, um, Sylvia Ramal, Dave and Deb from uh, the Planet D, um, lots and lots of great speakers in Marbella. I cannot wait. That's it for this episode. We got one more uh, episode coming out next week, just as uh, the uh, TBEX Marbella is about to start. So uh, see you next week and uh, see you in person. All right. Thanks, Pale. I'll see you soon. Bye bye. You've been listening to Travel Matters, the official podcast of TBEX. This episode of Travel Matters was hosted by TBEX CEO Rick Calvert and Radio Vagabond Palabo and produced by radioguru.co.uk. See more about upcoming TBEX events on tbexcon.com. You can follow Palabo on theradiovagabond.com. <laughs>